Good evening. Welcome to the William Finance Committee. Today is Wednesday, February 5th, 6.30 p.m. May I ask the clerk to call the roll, please? Uh, to my left, Don Camaro, Glenn Lawrence, Tom Worthen, myself, Jerry Stefanski, Chair Bernie Pigeon, and Joe Smith. Thank you. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. First item on our agenda is approving the minutes. <clears throat> January 29th. So moved. I have a motion. May I have a second, please? Second. second. Motion is made and seconded. Any concerns, questions, corrections? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I'm going to abstain because I wasn't here. I left early. Okay. That you're here. You're on the. You're in the minutes, man. Then I'll vote yes. How's that? Leaving early. I left early. Okay. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> Stay in, he, uh, it, yeah. it says members present. Okay. Yeah. All, right. Yeah. All right. All right. You were physically, if not in spirit. Well, no, I'm physically not in spirit. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is the update of the reviews and revenue and expenses. Um, now, it, it, uh, I might, uh, of course, being delivered by our town administrator, Derek Sullivan. At last night's meeting in the selectmen, it was sarcastically suggested that I wasn't going to get the digital printout of this presentation until 6.29, and it's overdue. You know, that's why I don't give high expectations to anyone. <laughs> I, thought you were, I thought you were fixing the lights and on. That was a nice exchange, actually. Oh, thank you. There's two volumes for this. Yeah, there's a, uh, there's just sort of more on the bus and a, uh, the PowerPoint. I think what I'd really like to go over first is the PowerPoint, if that works for everybody. Sure. All right. Let's see. Can we shut some lights or come back in the Is that, can you see? Do you want the lights off? Uh, can, can you move it so that the screen is expanded by 20 percent or is that is that how does that get done uh no <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how it'd be on there i don't know i'm sorry <laughs> oh boy now i, I feel Same better left to right i feel better now <laughs> bring the wall this bring the wall closer or move the computer you know it's the uh that thing from up the there top. yeah okay. so you gotta get a better vision plan done uh, <laughs> i i make uh illegible copies for you as well so and we only have one color copier in the building, so. So this is the simple breakdown of the revenue summary that uh, we've been going over. Our FY20 tax levy limit is uh, $42,357. Uh, you take the 2.5% increase, which is $1,050,009. That's the proposition 25 So when... Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of confusion around Proposition Two and a Half. People think it's their own personal, pro their own uh, property taxes cannot go up more than two and a half. No, your property is based off of really the, the valuation, which is the market value. So, but our levy base as a whole, which is our ability to to uh, tax, we are only allowed to increase that by the two and a half percent. Our estimated new growth has been reduced to four hundred thousand. Um, after a long meeting with the director of assessing, while we, we don't have, it uh, doesn't look to be another large solar program that's going to come online. So we'll be counting more on some personal property growth and a couple of the new uh, buildings and things like that. So uh, although if they pick up new stuff, that's fine. It just goes to free cash and our, and our levy's higher the following year. So. Uh, so that before the debt exclusion, we're looking at $43,450,366. Mm -hmm. 
the debt exclusion for the school is the uh, is the revenue. So you'll see that's just basically an offset, the revenue and the uh, and the expense. We have not borrowed that amount, so we've taken an estimated amount of the principal and interest totaling about two point five million dollars. That would be the reimbursement. That that would be what we estimate we have to we would have to pay the total twenty eight million borrowing for for us. Uh, given some of the news, the interest could be a little bit better, but we'll have to see what the market states. If it comes in like we're we're hoping it will be it will be really great, but I I don't want to much like six twenty nine. I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver on that. So I unfortunately don't have control of the bond markets. No, I, I know I heard you last night saying that you know about the bond markets and all that. Yeah. You might borrow the money sooner than later per se. Now people need to understand that their taxes only went up what you borrowed so far. Correct. Correct. That people go, people think. That's the hit for the new school. Yeah. Well, right. you remember, I forget what you said, 27, 28 million, whatever uh, 20 it was last million. night. Yeah. But that, once you borrow that, then that's, that's going to be added. You know, I don't think some right. people understand that. They kind of saw the hit they took for this amount and mm -hmm. thought, oh, that's not so bad. Right. They, uh, <laughs> that was the hit. That's not the uh, the, the full amount. So no, no. I, understand, I understand that. But people yeah. will say to me, oh, I said, I have never said there's more coming. But uh, you know, maybe the way I'm looking for to soften the impact a little bit, maybe get something out there that you know I'm not sure how you put it in a nice way. Your taxes are going to go up again, and then probably again. I, I would like to nominate you to do that. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, see, I don't know how you do that in a nice way. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the whole hit is that bad. Well, it's better than what we're getting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm not arguing whether it's, it's good or bad. Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying people yeah. don't understand how it works sometimes. Uh, and look, we understand there's people on fixed income, mm -hmm. there's, you know, not everybody doesn't, uh, can absorb the impact, we understand it, and it's, uh, it's tough, and we appreciated the support to, uh, to, to make it happen, because we think it's good for the community, right, for, for you guys sit in front of the PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see it. <laughs> Tom, you're right, I should have made it larger. <laughs> Evening, Alan. Afternoon, guys. Hey, Evening, Jimmy. I think Eric, when we presented it, when the school uh, building committee presented it, they estimated on a um, average home how much it would be in, in total. Right. Versus we're incrementally borrowing here; it's going up, but the maximum is what we suggest to the individual homeowner. So, and that's uh, we'll get into average single family tax bills later so those that you know if you've got the mansion you're paying more if you don't you're paying less so I th my only point was I don't think people realize that, that you could have three different increases in your tax bill that the first one wasn't the end of it you know as you borrow the money you're gonna yeah that's all no. uh, based on what we were talking about toward the end of the last week we're gonna borrow about Forty million bucks, aren't yeah, we? About thirty-eight million something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's we've already done the initial ten million, and I think we've got the the next round be twenty-eight, which bring you up to about thirty-eight million dollars. We're we're taking a small bit of a gamble here by doing the the full twenty-eight for the final borrowing, because if we if it goes over, there's a potential of us having to go out. Uh, you either absorb it in the budget or go out for basically another another debt exclusion. However, the rates are so good right now; they could, even if it were a little bit higher, it could it could offset itself. If that makes sense. When when are the bids due? The They're just starting. Like Twenty sixth process. Yeah, let me. Sell it. But it's sometime in February. Isn't February, yeah. It? Yeah. Was it twenty fourth or something like that? It's well, there's in different twenties. Yeah, I forget the exact date. Um, let's see if I'm, there's, there's two separate bids. Our, our financing schedule is a little, little different on the, uh, January 28th, Hilltop Security sent the town a draft annual report, so that's going to be embedded. We figure February 27th, town opens up bids, uh, for the school project, 
90 million total cost. Yeah, that's where you come to 38 million is after reimbursements. March 2nd, last uh, last day for town to provide uh, POS updates and finalize upcoming issue. Uh, March 3rd, the draft POS is sent to Bond Council. March 9th through 11th, which will be fun, I'll be, uh, don't, don't reach out to me, we're going to be having the rating call with s &P. That's always uh, an interesting one. Uh, the ni March 19th is a competitive sale, and it's estimated that on March 24th, the Board of Selectmen meeting would approve the sale and sign associated bar and paperwork. So there, uh, there's a couple other things after that, but that's the process. It's going to move darn fast. But uh, we were excited to see, and we, of course, are always going to hope for uh, to get to that last level of the bond rating. And uh, <coughs> we're just shy. Don't know if we'll hit it, but you know that's always a goal, and it'd be a, it would be a huge win for the town and the, uh, the finances of it overall. So. Yeah, indeed, as we were talking on the parking lot last night. I was wondering, how can we be paying less in interest but gaining more in interest? Is that legal? Mm. <laughs> so, next is... Uh, <laughs> Moving on. Moving along. <laughs> uh, so, state aid and the, the charter school, when you saw the... When you look on the uh, cherry sheets, which we'll go over a little bit later, our state aid only uh, increased by a little over $70,000. <laughs> $30 per pupil. We have roughly 2,400 kids in that, that count. Um, so the Student Opportunity Act raised the minimum from $25 to, um, to $30, but it hasn't done what we, we had hoped originally before the, the formulas got together. Um, and ironically, our charter school aid was reduced by $50,000. Um, excuse me, sorry, 33000 So our net new aid from the school is uh, 43020 That's the school choice that went up. Um, so all told, not including school choice, we went up about 39000 you know, what I knew when the governor said the, the amount went up when they announced it, we were going to go down. <laughs> it, they, you forget the uh, that some go up, some go down, unfortunately. And more, when this brought, when they, they brought the formula together, unfortunately it pooled the wealthy communities and they began to get more money. So we'd see some of the, looking at the Brooklines, um, Wellesley, Westons, things like that, that some of them have gotten a couple hundred thousand dollars where maybe they wouldn't have gotten that before. Mm -hmm. And it's just uh, the formula, unfortunately, considers uh, two points, which is one, the land wealth, two, the ability of the residents to pay. Uh, they consider us high in land wealth uh, just because of our general size and some of the some of the, uh, the the structures we have, unfortunately, our average single family uh, assessed value is pretty low. It's uh, it's just under three hundred thousand. So it's really when it comes to it, it's almost an unfair formula when you see that over fifty percent of our students are at the uh, what's considered the poverty line. So. Mm -hmm. And not to mention the large portion of our property is farmland. The uh, yeah the sixty one a the. You know, we've got some of the, the chapter land stuff, cranberry, cranberry bogs are taxed at obviously a much, much, much lower amount. So, you know. so um, state aid, the general government went up uh, about 58000 So they set it on the consensus of the revenue, which is about 2.8%. So that's not too bad. The uh, We had... Uh, finally caught up on our veterans benefits they they reimburse us 75 percent of you know essentially the prior year so we're looking at the uh the 258 and for going i reset down the expenses the uh the veterans based off of 75 percent of this and talking to the accountant what it looks like we're we're paying out um the exemptions for the elderly and uh blind and uh, service impaired 
went up slightly and then a slight reduction in state owned land. So all told, uh, our, our state aid is up uh, 119,072 dollars. So if you, when you look at it and then uh, local receipts, they're, they're pretty much uh, getting, getting stagnant on us. Our, for the first time, our, our, our uh, auto excise went, uh, did not cover the, the previous year. So in, uh, in FY18, we were at 3 million 89,000. FY million was three million. FY nineteen was three million nineteen thousand. So we're going to keep the, that at the two point nine million. Uh, local meals will be a slight increase. The uh, local rooms occupancy you're going to keep that the same. In the regular budget, I've added the line for the short term rental. I don't want to budget that until we see what we actually have for collections, and then there might be. You won't see it. To, that's just sort of the, the breakdown on the other, other sheet. I'm giving you more of the comprehensive, but the short-term rental, boat excise. That's uh, slightly reduced from FY20 to match the FY19 numbers. Uh, cannabis with the 150,000. We went through that. The uh, I know you were there, but we went over it last time. How um, we've got about a little over 1.4 million. 25% goes into that uh, Municipal Facility Stabilization Fund. It's made up of 3% excise and 3% impact fees. We're already getting that the, uh, the, the lobbyists from the cannabis, con uh, lobbyists to the Cannabis Control Commission are trying to change that the, uh, it's not the communities that do the impact fees. So. Uh, you know, I'm, I wish I wasn't right on what we're, we're seeing, but it looks like I think that impact fee is going to be really attacked going into the future. So I don't feel comfortable given the amount of shops that are opening up um, across the whole Commonwealth, bringing that into our annual budget just to have those fees either go away or, or reduced. You know, nothing's worse than either, either hiring or bringing people on <coughs> board than having to get rid of them in two years. It's just foolish when it comes down to it. So I think at last night's uh, selectman's meeting in talking about the cannabis, I think Selectman Slavin announced that there's about 700 local licenses that have been issued, but they're awaiting approval by the uh, commission, Cannabis Commission. Mm -hmm. And that is a huge flood, potential flood, uh, going into it and hitting our market. They're not going to give you money, they're just going to give you a few joints. That's all. Just one we might need them to <laughs> fix our sadness when that money's gone. So, <laughs> uh, so that's uh, with the uh, cannabis. And then the, the rest of the fees, we usually we use, uh, try and use about 90% of our uh, of the prior full year's actual collections. And that's uh, when speaking with the Department of Revenue, that's that's one of the fiscal policies that they, they established. Some of these you'll see are, are right around the, uh, the same amount, but it's just trying to offset as we bring them down. Uh, in the future, when we do not have any of the revenue coming from, uh, from CMAS, we'll see between a, uh, a two hundred dollars to $300,000 reduction, which will start you know, essentially next December, we're okay with that right now with with offsetting it with revenues that we, we have not budgeted, but we'll have to strongly look into that. Uh, the goal is to keep on growing without letting these bumps to you have to do uh, reductions in staffing and things like that, mm -hmm. so. Say, so Derek, I have a question? Yes. I think it was last week you were here, maybe two weeks ago, when you gave us this, yes. it looks like the, the rev, you lost about 375000 in revenue. It would have been on the, um, so we did not get as much revenue on the charter schools, if you remember, if you look, I don't have it, I don't have the floor cut. We'd estimated close to 600000 on the charter school, because that's what the Student Opportunity Act said that Wareham would get. So, no panic because for the first time in the 
last uh, last eight years, our assessments were reduced. Not only did they not increase as much, they actually reduced. So, so they did it on the expense side. Right? Yeah, it's an expense reduction. So essentially, the, the we did not get as much revenue, but they reduced our expenses. So um, had that not have been there, we, we would be having a, a different conversation. <laughs> you know, so. uh, available funds are, so Harbor Service permit fees, we take about 85000 out to uh, fund the harbor, the Division of Natural Resources, 30,000 for the water waste improvements through the Division of Natural Resources, and then wetlands protection, 25,000, those fees from Conservation Commission that we use to offset part of the salary of the conservation agent. So, <coughs> all told, um, our revenue outside of the uh, levy is approximately is, uh, $24 million $476,056. So our FY21 budget right now is estimated to be $70,426,422. Oh, uh, this is your typical pie chart of where does your, your revenue come from. So you look all told, when you take the levy limit, new growth, the 2.5% increase, and the, uh, the debt exclusion we should include in there, about 66% of our revenue derives from taxes. Uh, so about two thirds. The rest, state aid is uh, 19%. At one time, it was closer to 25%. As that's gone down, we've, we've made it up with other funds. Uh, you're looking at estimated local receipts are 10%. The enterprise fund direct cost transfer is about 1%. So that's um, the employee benefits that we pay on behalf of the enterprise fund. The, uh, we pay the insurance, the workers' comp, mm -hmm. the retirement, um, all the liabilities that the town actually pays on their behalf. And then approximately 15% of the department's uh, time that, that works on it, like uh, works with them, uh, such as administration, payroll. Uh, yeah, treasure collector, you know, accounting, uh, HR, things like that. So, um, so in state aid, uh, of the general government state aid is about 4%. The charter school, so I'm sorry, yeah, it used to be about 25 or 23% now. So that, that's just a simple breakdown of it. Now, where do you, um, let's just estimate a new growth. What do you, what do you use to estimate that? I mean, it's, is it? You know where it is an, an estimate is. Where, where do you, yeah. you know, just so where usually it come up with? we've taken five. Year, I usually take a five-year average, but then I go talk to the assessing department. What are you seeing? Permits. Um, you know some of the new growth. Are any of the solar companies going online? Um, it was a it was a major argument of four hundred fifty thousand to four hundred thousand. You know, but. At the end of the day, overestimating that hurts us. No, that, that's you know, what I wanted to know. You, yeah. That's a real conservative yeah. estimate. Yeah, I okay. think, you know, we It's know, better to be conservative right. on that number than it is to be. I, you know, I am 99% sure we will reach 400,000. So most likely it'll be, some, it'll be a little bit more. There's no problem with that. Right. We don't lose that revenue because when you're, when you're setting that, the tax rate through the DOR, that number actually goes in there and factors into the whole rate. So technically we don't even vote our revenue, if you will, we just show the, the revenue for our, um, you know, for our, uh, for our budget. You know, even sometimes we'll vote the local receipts and when setting the tax rate, the, you know, the DOR might say, hey, you know, that one just doesn't look like it's going to be enough. You need to reduce that that amount. And as long as you've got uh, you know other room to make it up, you're fine. Thank you. This is the uh, the expenses. So just a the little breakdown. So that's the tuition assessment. So that's charter, charter school, and uh, and the uh, school choice. So for the first time, school choice is down a hundred and ten thousand. 
charter school is slightly up 60,000, but uh, so we're looking at about a 49, just under $50,000 increase. Considering in the past we've had six, uh, a decrease, considering in the past we've had between 400 and $600,000 increases, that's the, if you will, the makeup on not getting as much revenue. And frankly, at the end of the day, it left us with a few hundred thousand dollars more that we were able to split between the town and the town and the school. So retired teachers' health insurance. Retired teachers are in the GIC for their health insurance. That's paid outside of our, our health line. That's actually assessment directly from the state. The other uh, tuition, I mean, the other things are uh, like mosquito control. Um, we, we don't hit, get hit with the MBTA because we have GATRA to offset it for, for transportation and some other smaller, smaller non things. So the uh, overlay is our reserve that we hold <coughs> against, uh, against tax revenue for abatements. We used to have to adjust that annually, especially when you're going through a reval year because you knew there'd be more abatements, but, and the DOR would only let you count one year. So you could have $500,000 from four years ago, and uh, you could not, and if you had a uh, negative amount with uh, abatements, you could not use that 500,000. That, that was what was crazy. So now they mm -hmm. let you pool the years. So you pool the liabilities, and uh, the big liabilities for a while were the, were the, uh, the uh, polls uh, for the Verizon and things, because you used to get uh, personal property tax on the lines and such. So when you look at the, re we call them the, uh, the recap sheet, but that's uh, just under, just over 5.3 million. Uh, health and dental insurance, the, there was no formal vote on it, but the, the, uh, this morning on the Mayflower Municipal Health Group, I'm a member of the steering committee. The recommendation was a 2% uh, rate increase, which is great. Uh, they have roughly 20, uh, 26 million in assets. About uh, their reserve is 15 million. So there's 11 million above reserve. The 2% the increase would buy down the, uh, would use some of the reserve about 25% to buy down the rates, which I'm fine because it used to be, you know, if you can keep it going on a, uh, you know, on a, on a small angle, that makes sense. Because of course you don't want to build your trust fund up too much because then technically, you know, that should be dispersed back, you, you know, as long as you're, you're above your, uh, your, the 15 million mark, we're doing fine. So I felt, uh, I, I felt conservatively that was a good number. Uh, we talked about, they, there had been talk about healthcare holidays. I had gone through that when I took over for the town, there'd been a healthcare holiday and it really, I told them that for no other words, it scares me, it really hurt us and put us in a, in a bad way. And frankly, I, would, I think it's easier for um, the town's employees, it's better to have the rate slightly lower than it is just to have this one blip. You know, it's much easier to, to work on your own finances that way. So. And this covers every employee, it's all schools and everything? Correct, that's all school, town, and it also includes uh, the non-teacher retirees. So we have about 175 people that are on medics. Mm -hmm. There we have all told 611 subscribers, and that, so that's, uh, single family, family plan. Uh, I actually don't know how many people that equals because some of them are the family plans. It could be a two person family. It could be, you know, the Brady Bunch or something like that. So, but uh, our splits are 67 and a half, 32 and a half. The agreement, the PC agreement ends June 30th. We started speaking with the PEC about the, uh, the splits going forward. How large, how is that retired employee thing growing in terms of numbers? The six, what, what, what was it five years ago? Or six? Yeah, well, we had, a, we had a large jump from uh, 168 last year to 175, but 
those that are on Medex, me, a Medex plan is three seventy eight a month. So it's a Medex with a PDP. I'm not trying to do that. You know, Medex with a separate drug drug plan, and that split is actually seventy five twenty five. Uh, when negotiating with the employees, they said, you know, the retirees needed should be a little bit, a little bit better. But if you're comparing it to our single plans, there are eight hundred. I'm more interested in the the number of em retired employees we have, and what direction is that going? Is Supposedly, people are living longer and stuff like that. Well, I was going to give you a uh, weapon, Tom, and you could help us out. But <laughs> <laughs> Dominic, we were concerned about him last week. We had him. Uh, could have been a problem. Could have been a statistic. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, we actually see a big savings because our retirees are not eligible for Medex, obviously, till 65. We have some people that retire at 55. And then it's still the um, they're still on the regular plans until med until they're eligible through Medex, and those are much more expensive for for our coverage. But you are not eligible for the seventy five twenty five split until you go to Medex. There are these the both the health and um, the retirement uh, uh, is the cash out right in the cash that the Correct. cash out yeah um, and then you got the adjusting entries. For the FASBs and all of that? For GASBs, we've got the, um, we have, uh, so we are considered, we were considered pay as you go. We're now funding our OPEB liability from the money we're putting, putting aside. Uh, we have about 1.43 million. Last year's returns were 22%, which was really, really which was awesome. You know, really? it's, uh, yeah, so we've put, uh, you know, all we put about 1.225 in there, and we've, we've made over 200,000. Us putting that in there, even with the rise in costs, have reduced our OPEB liabilities. Liabilities about 118 million at one time. We're now at a hundred million. Then if you factor in the um, the one 1.4, you're you're a little under 99. So I mean, yes, impossible goal, but it's nice to see that what we're doing it actuarially is being taken into account. And believe it or not, that helps our bond oh, rating. Yeah. It's the only reason well. to do it, because so. we'll never ever pay it. Yeah, it, I mean, it's... I mean, you have to do something, so if you do enough to keep keep the bond rating better, yeah. then that's about all you can do. The idea that you need to have cash on hand to fully fund the health insurance liability for all your employees today throughout their their, their life is um, the U.S. Uh, Postal Department. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's, you know. Well, like I said, people are living longer and everything else, so. Very well. So, um, Plymouth County Retirement, we save 3% by paying up front. So that's usually, you know, um, we, we earn 2% interest, so it's a net 1% gain to us when you, mm -hmm. when you think about it overall. So it's a, it's, it's a smart thing for us to do. Uh, general general workers comp insurance we are with uh, Maya on that and uh, that's those are some of the costs so we have there, there's different jobs right that are that are more expensive um, the, the laborers and people like that have a higher higher rate and a lot of their claims are higher claims our teachers especially in special special education teachers have mostly have the most claims because they are they're the the you know biting kicking things like that and you know it's we're we tell everybody you need to make the reports you need to report it because otherwise if something comes back you get fined on it as well for not having reported it so um, we do not we have not uh, met with Maya yet I probably won't have the uh, their actual rates, I usually don't get them until uh, late March, early early April, but given what I've seen for expenditures and uh, I'm comfortable with what we're, with what we're, what I've budgeted in there. Um, we are part, we get rewards from Maya. Right now I'm gonna use approximately $40,000 in rewards, believe it or not, for MS4 for stormwater assistance, which is, um, we start hiring an independent contractor for catch basin cleaning 
and that's going to be what you see um, when you meet with the departments. The only increase really to the expenses to municipal maintenance is $20,000 for MS4. And just looking through it, most likely at town meeting, we're looking to go in the consor with the consortium of uh, hiring the uh, Mass Municipal, uh, excuse me, the Mass Maritime Academy to do outflow testing and things that need to be done uh, via the EPA, via the unfunded mandate. Although the selectmen like to say we're not going to do it, we're going to do it because we've had our first uh, letter from the EPA with findings. So, uh, that's going to be approximately $28,000 a year. So mostly it's a three-year project with some, some years are a little bit cheaper than others. So most likely I'll be looking at town meeting to, uh, to, to transfer some funds from free cash to have that money set aside because that who knows what's going to happen after three years. So I don't think building into the budget makes sense at this time. I'd rather do the, the payment of the age group could be better than towns. No, I mean, you look at what we have for 189 miles of road. I've got, uh, we have almost 1,700 street lights, <laughs> you know, for the, uh, I think we're at about 3,300 catch basins. And, you know, and multiple outflows and stuff. It's just, it, it can't happen. And that department, we've, if things that I, there was nearly a uh, position that I was going to, that I was going to defund that was open to, to make budget. I just, I can't take anything more out of that department. So it's, uh, that needs to be built up. Mm -hmm. does, does our work bench call, do you, uh, is it, um, what was I gonna say? Is, is, is there a, um, it's what I was looking for. Huh? Do, do they um, audit you every year on that? We have a, we have an audit based on the salary and there'll be adjustments. We had one year there was a, there was a high adjustment because there was a, um, I think between the school and us, we had a few retro checks that came in, which boosted salaries, which you, you pay it based on right, the salary. Right, that's what I mean, yeah, I see the yeah, audit. So they, every they, year we have a, um, Maya sends an auditor in, so. Has that audit been up and down, or just because of that one time it was up, or was it, it was pretty stable? This year, believe it or not, I think we were within something like $750, which was kind of absurd. So that's, that's great. You that's know, great. yeah. So not, not a major increase. Uh, we do have a few high cost claimants. Built into that line is also the one, we have a separate, two separate 111 F, uh, which is the police, uh, based on the Mass General Law, the police have a separate one, which uh, when they're injured on duty, which is paid. So we have one that's uh, a catastrophic and then a, a separate one that pays some money back. It's, uh, you know, if we have another decent year of not large increases, uh, I've been trying to, every year we look at it, what's the, what's the cost benefit to increase the, the EP <coughs> coverage, but right now the, uh, the increase to the premium versus the weekly wage benefit just doesn't make sense. Uh, it would obviously help that budget line with the uh, within the police department, but the overall cost to the town would be higher. So, um, Medicare one point four five percent of the salaries. Unemployment is two hundred thousand. At some point in maybe next year, that's one of the things I'm looking at is start a uh, start having an article for unemployment then we basically, we're already self-insured. We only pay, you know, <coughs> I think, $600 quarterly to the, uh, to the Commonwealth to the, uh, for the unemployment, but that's, we, we pay our own benefits. Uh, I think we should take that out of the annual budget, put money aside through, uh, through free cash, and then that would give us an ability to pay to, um, offset the loss of revenue from uh, CMW. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the, the tactics I've been looking at because <coughs> we do have some years we've had uh, unemployment as high as 258,000. 
but mostly it comes in be, you know between seventy five thousand and one hundred. So I think that's a better way to set up the article. Being self employed on that unemployment, who who does the claim? Who denies the claim? Does it still a state process? Yeah, we do have a uh, we use UTI that I think we pay a couple thousand. Uh, and they, they do the claims. Yeah, we do the claims. Claims are difficult. Claims hearings can require us to go to Boston four times, and you'd have you'll have the supervisor, the um, uh, the assistant town administrator for human resources, and just the you know the the value of all day hearings for those. Sometimes it's it's almost not worth it. I know it sounds awful because you'll still get shot down on some of them. We've had one person that quit. We went through all the hearings. They got denied benefits. They went and worked for somebody else partially. They quit, but did not, the, that other one didn't pick them up enough. We had to cover them. And we said, wait a minute, we got denied. They said, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, you know, it's, a, it's tough. So, um, Was we had employment for seasonal help? We, we, we never used to, but we've seen more and more people um, doing that, especially when you keep them on past a certain time. We used to be able to get the dispensation to not, not consider it, but they've denied it a few times now. So, um, <laughs> we've Might be down that road. <laughs> yeah, and then we've had some of them get uh, jobs in the, uh, in the our off season, if you will, yep. and lose those jobs, and we're paying them benefits because we, you know, we paid more during the time. Um, life insurance slight reduction of five thousand to twenty five thousand, uh, but the, you know everybody gets uh, ten thousand dollar insurance policy. There's a that you can opt in for it, and then when you're retired, it's five thousand. It's I think it's the town uh, town covers seventy five. The percent of the employee covers twenty five. Anything above that is a, is elective, and it's a, you know it's it's not a large amount. Town's a beneficiary. <laughs> it's, I'll tell you a story off <laughs> offline sometime. <laughs> um, veterans benefits, that's what we were talking about before. And that's a, that's 25% back or something? Correct, yes. Uh, debt exclusion, that's the offset of the new school debt. This is our, our debt principal, and then we have debt interest and combine the long and short term. Uh, even if that's going, one of the things we need to consider is we really should have about 3% of our annual budget in, in regular debt, not the exclusion. Uh, we have nowhere near that. Now, good. the good is the uh, bond rating agencies love that we don't have the, a lot of debt out there, if you will. The bad is, you know, the, it's a tool we could use, but you also have to be able to pay the, the, the debt to, to be able to incur it. Uh, I do not believe we should go below this, especially if we're considering um, what you saw from the school for a new roof, potentially. And really what I was, one of the plans is to, if we're going to do the new police station, if that works out, is to pay that through the declining debt service Plus the um, the uh, medical uh, plus the marijuana stabilization fund, so it's no true impact to the taxpayers. So there's not a, a an increase to it. It's what they've are, what's already been built into the budget, plus this other revenue source, and that'd that's nice. the ultimate goal. That'd be nice. Well, we know that, but with the um, with the new school, it is very tough to go back to them and ask for for more money. Yeah, you have estimated around 25 mil, yeah. and if you can do it in, it's great. But it's yeah. going to be difficult. It will be. We probably should borrow it today and just really move it along real quick. But <laughs> that's not going to happen. We didn't talk about that last <laughs> night, the possibility of it. Uh... Well, uh, we'll share cells. It'll be fair. <laughs> <laughs> From the new station, not yeah. this one. <laughs> um, so that's you know this general expense summary, <coughs> and then this was just a simple uh, look at uh, FY20 versus FY21, and the FY20 is the uh, budgeted amount. 
So um, you see the school and town and town employee benefits increased about 622,000. That's a almost 4.5% increase. General government, general government is, and this is interesting when it comes down to it, when you look at it, it's town meeting, selectmen, administration, finance committee, the reserve fund, uh, accounting, the audit, assessors, uh, the reval and redo it, the, the finance director, aka treasurer collector, general services, which is all our mailings, including the uh, the main printer in the mailing room and the mail machine, legal services, personnel services, uh, IT, the IT communications, town clerk, elections and registrations, and uh, the planning community development and the sick bonus. So. And that's roughly, actually, when, when we go to another one, you'll be looking at, it's almost 4% uh, of our, that's 4% of our expenses. Is all that's covered under that small amount. So, uh, general government, 2.62% increase, roughly 82,000. That's contractual, cultural, and recreation. You'll see a larger increase with the, there, that's the, um, that's the library. Yeah, that's the, um, I'm sorry, that's not, that's not library. That's my council on aging, I believe. So um, I'll break it down there. School, we're looking at a little over $800,000 increase, so 2.72%. Upper Cape Contact, this was really a big savings year. We had six less students going there. Um, Bourne had the most new students. So that, that was really a great, um, a, a goodbye kiss from Superintendent Dutch. So we, we appreciate it. Yeah, leave it, leave it. Um, but that's, you know, it's a great school. So that's, a, that's really a good year. However, that is not representative of most years. Yeah, so we need to be aware of that. Public safety, that's the uh, that's uh, police and uh, division of natural resources. That's the one, if we had, if we had all the money in the world, the place to, to pump in the money right now is what we've talked about. It would be public safety for police it would be co continuing with the inspectional services and municipal maintenance, and that would be really one of the biggest things to help this community. Uh, public works, that is, that is municipal maintenance, so it covers snow and ice, the electricity for the street lights, it covers the, all the maintenance for <laughs> the roads, the, the cemeteries, the beach combing, the, uh, the, uh, what, the uh, what do you call it, lawn mowing. It covers everything that crew does, and it is that small amount. They have a, they have a larger increase this year. Um, they had a bigger blurb for their contractual increases for one year, and then it will, uh, it will mellow out, if you will. Um, health and Human Services, that's with the, uh, that's Board of Health. And there is a reduction in the Board of Health, which is, uh, which is showing there, um, because we have somebody that's, uh, their salary is being picked up by the rental inspection program. So they do the rental inspection program, they should be paid through that program. Do you have any idea how much that's bringing in that, that, that program? I, I, know that, I know it's a significant amount. Yeah, it is. It's, it's I just been, wasn't sure what it was. It's been going up to between seventy-five and a hundred thousand dollars. So it pays for. Um, there's a, there's a half time, uh, half FTA in their clerical. Um, the person's leaving, so we'll have to refill that, and uh, twenty-five percent of uh, of uh, Mr. McDonald's uh, salary as well, because that's when he does all the rental inspections. We could offset Mr. Ethios and more, but we're trying to, to keep it in line. I know it was a pretty profitable program. So there's debt service, new school debt, and that's, uh, you see all told, you know, you're at about 5.27, but that's, 
That's really inaccurate because 1.84 uh, million of that is the uh, is the new school debt, which really isn't. That's you know that's the debt exclusion expense, so that's not like mm -hmm. a new salary or anything like that. Say, hey, Derek, are you in the school on the same page there? For, or uh, is the school on your page for the expense? Um, I let the uh, superintendent know that's what we were able to provide, and. Uh, I did when putting in this budget document you'll see the non net so the, the transportation services is what the school requested and the rest of the funds are parked in the, um, in the, in the net school spending line so uh, the school committee has not voted on that you know given the only changes I anticipate on seeing is you know st state aid or assessment so the different versions that comes out through Boston. Um, long, long story of saying that if um, if that's not the budget that's voted from the school committee, we'll do what we usually do. We will have an unbalanced budget with the school's number, and we will have a balanced budget with the administration number, and folks are free to both vote on whichever one they will push. <laughs> well, we'll also have a balanced budget from the finance committee because they're also required by law. Very nice. <laughs> Doesn't have to match your budget, but it just has to be. Now balanced. you have to go spoil things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking you've only got fifty thousand for the finance committee reserve, and gosh, that's not even pin money. It's not four yeah. different colored tools. No, yeah. <laughs> I get you up to fifty thousand and one dollars. <laughs> Maybe we can go for two. <laughs> So this is sort of this is, this is an interesting one that really, really shows you uh, a breakdown in a different format. And this was uh, everybody uh, always asks, okay. where does the money go? Where does my dollar go? And we thought really this is a this is a great breakdown to take a look at it. That school upper Cape Cod Tech and then benefits is roughly you know you're looking at uh, over two thirds. Yeah, you know, but and then you take the state and county assessments. You take the new school debt, and then the rest of that covers your, your police, your public works. I mean, you see our health and uh, debt service and then culture. And general government, for all that that we talked about that's done, that gets done, it is such a small portion of this, of the, uh, of the budget. You know, what would be interesting is if you took <clears throat> that purple on the left and extended it over for all of the grants and stuff the school gets that yep. don't show in there. And you would see that that buck becomes about a buck and a half. Yeah. So there's... Yeah. Um, yeah, because all the other uh, ads they get, uh, we total what we spend yeah. for all the students, wherever they may go. I think I calculated it up to around 39 million, almost 40 million yeah. that we actually pay. It won't show on that because as right. Jerry said, a lot of grants are in there. And reimbursements from the state, et cetera. There's yeah. federal grants, there's state. Cafeteria. There's, yep, the cafeteria, some of those expenditures. So, um, you know, there's, um, it's a lot. So, and it's, and it's often frustrating. Um, I can tell you saw the, saw the emails and such. We, I would love to be able to do anything for anyone instantly. I always say our lives would be easier if we could just say yes. But when you consider that, you know, almost sliver of the dollar is what we have to work with to do to do many of those things. It's just, you it's know, just not. I always thought though that to get the true expense of the town, yeah, that all of those grants and everything is, should be in there, okay? Because that's not getting that's giving a picture of sixty six percent of the right. town. You need, in my opinion, you need to get the other third in there. Show the outside funding. Yeah, you can reflect that yeah, the, uh, yeah. The increase. Yeah, because, because our tax dollars. Yeah, yeah. Um, any any, any <laughs> idea what that might be? That number or a percentage wise? Is it twenty? You know, twenty percent. We say it's, it's, it's more I'm, than that. I'm thinking in the twenty to twenty-five million, yeah. more. Wow, it's substantial. Yeah. Wow. If you isolate just the schools, because as, uh, as Derek was pointing out. There's a lot of things in our expenses that we carry on the municipal side that is actually expenses for school employees that we'd be separating out. But we're a whole community. 
and so we don't separate out. But yes, um, those individuals that stand up at town meeting that chastise the municipal side because they're spending so much money, they might realize that really we're not spending, we're barely getting by. No, I think municipal maintenance does a great job, but a couple million bucks. <laughs> but I didn't realize that we got, well, you think over 25 million in grants? Well, there's uh, grants, there's, there's, there's the food service program. It is I mean, there's grants from federal, state, and private. Right. So I didn't realize and, it was that big of a number. Yeah. It's so I'm not sure if it's that big, but I know, um, since we've checked it, the food service part of the uh, school department, yeah. we don't see that at all because that's all grants. Right. For food, it's the revenues they get in from, from the meals, which are barely touches the service of the expense. We pick up, I believe, the benefits for the employees. Yes. Yeah. But uh, as far as the expense of running the place, <coughs> all in, like, federal grants, you don't see that at all. It was that kind of money. Hmm. I've had a breakdown of it. I've <coughs> So, uh, you know, I, I just thought that was a different, an interesting different format. To, to it doesn't see. change the end result. It just throws some more information in there, but it doesn't change the bottom line. It's another way to look at it. <coughs> but it's a good, good selling point if someone bitches, you know, you can throw that at them and say, you know, it's really what the school and stuff is getting is a hell of a lot more than what we're giving them. And I'm not talented enough to superimpose Bernie's face on the dollar. We talked about a few other things just last night. I see that dollar bill come in the store today with, uh, with Trump. So Trump 2020 on a, on a, on a million dollar bill. It was yeah. cool. Yeah. So this, I mean, this is the uh, <laughs> right another, word, another way of looking at it. And, uh, there's an error on there. That's just the school. That's not with Upper Cape Cod Tech. The, that's the Upper Cape Cod Tech is separate 5% over there. But this is, you break this down, instead of percents, you could say, you know, uh, cents on here. So if you looked at it uh, for the general government, five cents out of every dollar goes to do that. Uh, uh, DPW Public Works is four cents of, of every dollar. So it's really, uh, on it, it's really, it's tough. And I commend a lot of the departments for getting done what they have to, the new things heaped on them. We're very lucky to have the employees that we have, from department heads uh, to the, you know, to the uh, uh, middle management, clerical, laborers, and uh, you know, the officers. It's, it's really fantastic. So, um, EMS is obviously that's the <coughs> offset receipt. That's that's one big change that could happen if EMS is. Um, they're trending to be okay, but they were they were off last year. We only actually brought in seven thousand over the the um, expenses. So if we are still staying that same manner, it's good. It can't be an offset receipt anymore. It's going to have to be brought into the into the town budget. I mean, it just I mean, do seven thousand isn't much. It used to be more than that. It used to be more. Um, Last year, trying to fill staffing was unbelievable, and we um, we had to negotiate with the unions that actually had an idea to bring in um, to, some some more paramedics and stuff to uh, to help alleviate them because the amount of runs they were doing, being held over for shifts, doing twenty four hour shifts, and then you know having a little bit of rest but another twenty four hour, they were getting crushed. And it was yielding a huge OT for us as well. So, um, you know, some of the other things that we used to make more money, but we also brought in where we fund the ambulance through that department as well. Now, for a long time, they just didn't fund ambulances. You know, I think the, uh, what was it, the uh, 06 was our newest for a long time. So now we have three ambulances in the fleet. We run two ambulances every shift, which has been a real boon for the community, the level of service that we're getting. Um, that's one of the few ones where you talk about uh, service via expense. You know, it's, it's a tough one. As long as we basically you know, even break even, it's, it's just too important for the community the level of service that we get to, to basically mess around. No longer buying four new ambulances. No, 
That's, <laughs> other communities were using the, our, the revenues they should have been getting with, to buy their things. But it's, um, you know, there's... Privatizing. Worth watching, so. They were having trouble, are they still having trouble in, in, in collections? I know they were having a big, wasn't it last year or the year before they were having yeah. a big problem with collections? We do the override, um, uh, we, we write, do the write-offs, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, periodically. You have what we bill versus what Mass Mass Health and uh, what you get paid, paid right, is, different, is, yeah. is a lot different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the uh, car accidents are fantastic because if uh, health insurance isn't picking up, the regular auto insurance picks it up as well. So those are great money makers. Uh, I know. It's, I love you. You know, so it's, it's, you sound like a ghoul after a while. Yeah. We're, I think when we were self-insured, I really hated myself. So <laughs> of the health insurance. Uh, um, yeah, so... That's just something that we need to keep an eye on for, yeah. for how it's trending. Uh, it wouldn't be, it's really just a, a gazinga and a gazaga, if you will, will just be an offset in the budget if we have to bring it in and we would no longer have the article to, to do it as an offset. Mm -hmm. And we're responsible for maintaining the same level of service at the very least. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're lucky to have them. They, they obviously work closely with the, with everyone, and uh, we're lucky to have the hospital in town. But sometimes they have to transport all the way to Providence when uh, South Coast opens up its new level one trauma unit. Well, we say trauma is the key. Yeah. yeah, the level one trauma unit that's going to save some travel time, which you know saves lives, obviously, but it also saves uh, when our when our crews are uh, our run times and stuff like that, having to be out of service. Right, yeah, they're, they're out. Yeah. 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 We get paid by miles and stuff, so in a perfect world, you know, what you build on the mileage, you would actually get paid, but we only get paid X amount, so. When they go out on a run, does Onset or Wareham send a truck also? Uh, you know, it's... Or do they call one? It's one town in res when things, uh, you know, when there's accidents or fires. I'm just thinking of a building. I'm yeah. a lot of ghoulish for them here. Yeah. Yeah. Building. Yeah. So. Well, it's good to know you're more of a ghoul than me. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> but a truck a does respond to every ambulance way. Yeah. And so. It's the worst. So, I mean, that's it. Uh, we've already really gone over it. So, the, uh, and then that was the, we should have it up a little bit further, but that was the revenue break. Nothing to, you know, we've gone over it, nothing too intense. These are the uh, cherry sheets. It's a little difficult to, uh, with the multiple years to come over, but the big thing you, when you look at it is the, uh, you know, our state aid has gone up for, for schools and for, for general government has been really, uh, so we've done really well. So we've gone about 14.5 million in 2012 to 16.36. However, this is the one that's the killer. You know, we've gone through, uh, used to be two, in 2012, 2,045,000. Um, you know, we're now up to over 5 million. Uh, in this current fiscal year, we're about 5.1. But you can see that our net state aid has gone down. We're still down about one point, at least $1.1 billion. And that's really see just sort of the trends on it so this is the first time that we've uh, you know we, we've had a really we have these sort of uh, ebbs and flows so in 2012 we're at 12.4 went up to 12.6 then slightly down 12.5 and then it really just kept on spiraling down with a couple increases so I mean if we you know you looked at it and every year in the back of my mind, I said, you, at some point you regress to the mean, right? You cannot, how many more kids can leave? But mm -hmm. it, it just kept on going, so. Uh, I added a trend line just to be cute. <laughs> it's a helpful chart, though, good chart. Yeah, thank you. 
Uh, and then that's the um, the Austin sensor assessment. You can see it's the it has since 2013 it has done nothing but skyrocket on it. So, and this is 2021 is the first time that we've had small relief. Upper Cape Cod Tech, and you can see there's some years. Uh, FY14 was the year that we were the ones that had, I think it was 28 new students, so that was a major increase that we had to absorb. And then the graduating class um, that came out in the new class offset that, so we saw the reduction. And there's, you know, there's, there's, it, it's going up, but it's been relatively, uh, you know, acceptable, if you will. All right, so this is the big one. Uh, we are always told, you know, what, uh, what, you know, how much we're, we're uh, paying in Wareham for taxes and that our tax rate is so high and stuff. And we try and say tax rate does not matter. It's really your average single family tax <coughs> bill. And that's, uh, uh, unfortunately, I didn't have some of the other parts there, but this is what it's, your average single family tax bill is your assessed value and your tax rate. So when it comes down to it, Wareham, the town, without the districts, our average single family tax bill is about 30, a little over $3,200, which ranks 16th lowest in the Commonwealth, one sixth lowest in the Commonwealth. You bring the districts into there. Um, Wareham Fire District has a slightly lesser rate than uh, than Onset, so you're about three three thousand eight hundred eighty four, and then the Onset Fire District brings you up to four thousand. We are still substantially less than other other communities in the average single family tax bill. Some of them go from assessed values to you know three hundred to four hundred and fifty thousand. So you'll see some that have the uh, the, the much lower uh, tax rates. I think one has uh, eight dollars, but their average single family tax, uh, their average assessed value is close, close to uh, half a million bucks. So. Uh, one million. We're so still the lowest around, though. We are by far the lowest around, and when you look at it um, and you say, "Hey, you're only about six hundred some odd dollars more than Falmouth," uh, you know, it does keep on going up. Well, this next slide is where I like to talk about wh why that really matters. So if you look at the average single family tax bill for these other communities, and then I took the highest one, which was the Wareham onset fire for us, and I did the, uh, the, the delta real quick there. Um, so you know, you go from 927, 2000 for some of them, and then the, um, that came out the Wareham single family parcels. We have 9,426 family parcels. This is a um, sort of quick and dirty way to look at it. So, if we had, with Falmouth, with not that big a difference, an extra $666, I don't like the 666, but the, uh, for the, with the 9,426 parcels, we would have over $7.2 million in, in revenue above the, where we stand today. You know, so we'll go back to Bourne. Our average single family tax bill is about $927 difference than theirs, 7.7 .7 million. Carver, uh, to, we're at about 2,000, almost 2,100, 14.7 million. Again, found with 7.2. Lakeville, uh, a little almost under $1,100 difference, 9.7 million. Mattapoisett at 2,600 we would have 25 million. Middleborough at the 12, 1248, just under 1250 dollars, 9.3 million. Plymouth with the almost $2,100 difference, 18.6. And Rochester with the 1557, 14.4 million. So, you know, I understand that you, and we're not dissimilar in services in a lot of those communities. You know, there's some that uh, Carver's going to 
uh, is is trying to figure out what to do with their trash, and I don't think they'll be offering uh, something with with trash unless they they join in with us. So it's the same level, you know. Some of them, Falmouth has a lot of services. Um, some of the trash, if you know, we could we could probably do it if you wanted to increase your tax bills. That's just one example of some of the things. What, how could I fund municipal maintenance? How could I fund uh, the police? What could we do for the community? Mm. You know, it's without being fresh, we could build, it's what the residents of this community want. You could, you could buy them a, you could build them a Ferris wheel if they want it. It is whatever you want, but you have to be willing to pay for it. And if you want the same services as the surrounding communities, you need to be willing to, to come up to that. And if you don't, I understand because that's that's been sort of the message. We, uh, I believe that we can use our our low tax bills and such as a way to attract businesses and attract people to the community. I'm going to guess uh, most of you came here. Uh, you're not all all local born and bred. Uh, you know, you came here for a reason. It's beautiful, but. The cost of living is a, a lot lower in other communities in the Commonwealth, so you get the both of both the best worlds. So that's that's the one that I always think about, and I'll, I'll clean that up, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, later. So that's Sir, I have a question that might be stupid, but I'll ask it anyways. Are there any towns in Massachusetts that have like a s split tax bill where, um, mm -hmm. say, your home is worth, let's say, three hundred thousand or less, you mm -hmm. pay a certain rent? If it's a million or more, you pay a certain rate. Can, can, is, is there anything like that that's possible? They you, do you know they split with the industrial properties. Like Carver has a split tax rate where they for, charge. For industrial yeah, commercial. Right. I was talking about, you know, single family homes. There's yeah. no, no, well, it's not legal or there's no place in Massachusetts that does that. So this so is which probably. The rich pay more. That's all I was saying. You know what well, I mean? Well, in the bottom line, that's what I was thinking. But they do. They do. They already do pay more. Because you have, if you're wealthy and your house is assessed at a at a million, you're paying. I understand, but you're still paying the same rate. Right. Yeah. The rate. I was saying the change in the rate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but even if you change the rate, you can only collect so much. I did not know your middle name was Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> Just a question. Just a question. Just a question. So you I don't have a room. My my grandson just moved out. But I hope you're quiet. <laughs> you're looking at it this way is that you don't challenge yourself to run more efficiently than you're running and there are opportunities in this town to run the services we provide more efficiently than we're running them now okay. and that's got to be our ch challenge because you're not going to I mean Dominic tell me look at what you get for 2.4 million I mean let's look at it the other way and say how we get more how do we get more for the money we raise? Yeah, no, and I, I understand. I mean, you're going to have trash collection and stuff like that that are going to be issues no, that are facing you. Uh, trash collection is a thing of the past. That's it's cost way too much. I don't think there's any town that still does that, is there? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, really? There, there is, mm -hmm. and there's some. Um, you know, there's some that they have the, the pay as you throw sandwich has pay as you throw when you buy a sixty dollar sticker and then you pay you buy the bags um you know north battleboro has sort of a a hybrid you pay 250 dollars for a sticker but they come and do curbside but you still do pay as you throw you still have to buy the bags and they take recycling and there's you know there's everything in between mm -hmm. i think falma still has true trash pickup but marion has I think Stoughton well, still has. I, I tell you, I've been down here three or four years now. I was paying one thirty-five quarter for curbside trash pickup. Yeah. yeah. And your darn Stoughton trucks are always dropping trash. Always oh, coming down. Aren't they awful? <laughs> <laughs> they are. Yeah, so, they truck all this stuff down to Rochester. Yeah. I I always wondered. I'm looking at those trucks. I was like, you know, they're coming down here. Is there anything you can put on those trucks to, to bring back, you know, to save on travel time or something? But, uh, yeah, you know, Tom, to the, to the point that you can always look at efficiencies, but back, uh, up until before before I was here through the uh, 
the recession and stuff, the mantra was always do more with less and do more with less. And as the cuts kept on coming, the 90 eventually you do less with less. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying of, cut. Uh, I'm just saying how do you how do you right. make your dollar your existing personnel go further more efficient. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Which really comes down to prioritizing what's important to the town and well, that's it, kind of what we slide. have idle non productive assets like Everett School and the yeah. school out west on the west whatever it is, West Wareham. Yeah. <clears throat> so there were there are, are things that we could focus on that will will help, and then maybe you do a combination of what you're. Yeah, I, I agree with those. We've been looking at Everett. At one point, the original plan had to be able to, Everett was going to be, it was brought to when CETA existed, to be basically a public service hub because a lot of our communities need, need service. And the goal was to rehab the building a little bit have the public service entities in there with maybe maybe low low if any rent and uh, you weren't really concerned on the rent but what you were trying to do was bring services to the community that the town could not provide which then lifts our residents up helps them helps make their lives better and helps them make the community better but that was turned down because it wasn't enough of a money maker and that really sometimes you generate money or better the community without, and this is going to sound like heresy for me, without going for top dollar, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's uh, West School, we could probably send, sell that to a low income developer like that. Not the, not the thing we want best for the community. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're looking at the, uh, the <coughs> development authorities looking at Fort Littleton to do some of the, the senior, uh, mostly trying to get the senior affordable housing, which helps our, our existing residents transition from their home, stay within the community that they love, their home, somebody else comes in, can put some money into it, make that better, um, and keep it, you know, and also, and this sounds crazy, but but keep families. We're the Cape, and some of us as well are seeing the drought of families while you have to pay to educate children, our overhead cost for educating children is pretty much set. And if each kid you get or lose is really just an aid number. And families are good for communities. Families spend money, they're part of the community. There's a, you need a healthy balance of the retirees, the families to the, you know, the single folk and stuff like that. So um, it, the 2020 census is gonna be a really, really cool thing to take a look at, for lack of a, a better term. It's going to be so interesting to see. I don't think people understand uh, just how seriously that census impacts the community. So it's in, when you speak to the police, fire, the EMS, they laugh at the census data of 22,000 year-round people because there's a lot of almost, uh, you know, the shadow residents, if you will, that are not part of the census that live here and do certain things. There's, there's uh, For a community like us, you're right, the yeah. census is off. Right. Because people don't live here year round. Right. And it's not just the year round, but there's some that, that will periodically rent their houses or, or don't report it and things like that. Or some, you know, there's, there's some interesting things that go on. So, so. Yeah, Tom, I, and just to get back to your point, I don't think it's always a woe is me um, message on things. I think you, there, there are always opportunities. There's things that we look at to, to, to try and be more efficient. Uh, it's like when we combine the school and town bus mechanics, we, our salary did not go down, but we became more efficient in our service delivery. During snow and ice, we can do those repairs. During doing the um, school and bus inspections, we can have, uh, instead of having uh, two people, you have four people, so you get a better uh, better operations going on. So, um, you know, it's, I'll never say we can't do better. Except for myself. <laughs> I'm sure you can. You've done well, though. I mean, compared compa when I first started attending town meetings and things of that nature, we were, 
in a pretty deep trough. And I'd say we're not in a trough at all right now. We're on a yeah, and the the risk that we have with the, you know we have stabilization fund balance over over five percent, putting money into OPEB, buying the buying the using the free cash as we are buying things, and people think, okay, well they've got enough money to do these other things, but those are the things that you almost should be doing through your budget, but we're we're doing it through through another way, and we've always. Um, just to get back to being most efficient, the the stabilization fund balance was geez, what was it, roughly four hundred thousand when I came on board and they built into the budget a hundred and fifty thousand annually to the stabilization fund. Said we're making cuts, we're cutting teachers, you know, um, you know, reducing positions at the police department. We're gonna put that in there. No, you know, keep your budget, your operating budget, try and keep that as much for operations, be conservative build up your free cash, and then utilize that for your stabilization fund. We created that policy where 50% of the free cash went into there where we Super have reached true. our mark, you know, and there's being, and that's, that's not just one person, that's the finance committee, the board of selectmen, the residents of this community voting for that, the departments working on it. So all the success has been a team effort, and it's really, you know, it's really been good. But unfortunately, many of those in the know um, that aren't in the know, if you will, see the success as why are we not getting more now? And it's, you know, it's tough to translate. Well, we put out enough hot air, so we haven't had much snow this year, so there's 500,000 bucks. <laughs> I just helped with that. <laughs> um, now, the presentation, we're going to try to produce that for um, town meeting and yeah. people. And so what I think, um, Mr. Chair, so, so for example, um, <coughs> some of these, like the, the backgrounds, I'll change the, uh, I'll change that out of the black backgrounds and just uh, be the black or white, just to, yeah, maybe, maybe a silly use of. Uh, Is there uh, anything though from that we like, that uh, charts are like that you like to be added that you think could uh, introduce more information? Well, I, I, as taxpayers, I think they'd be, they, some of them should understand what's happened to their water bills, <coughs> um, to their the fire protection that they're getting. <coughs> I mean, what their total picture looks like. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a pesky little group that's over there called the Prudential League. <coughs> well, I mean, they just, what, they spend $15 million to do get magnesium out of the water. <coughs> <coughs> That's unfortunately, 11, 11 million dollars for a new fire department, aunts, yeah. things of that nature. So <coughs> these people are still paying it. In, in, uh, indeed, it shows up in our bills, <coughs> not necessarily our tax bill, which is the only thing we're responsible Hold for. Hold on, have you ever been to any of the aunts uh, water meetings? You know how many people attend? Yeah. They look like this room right here. Nobody goes. You know, I go once a while, but. There's, there's no uh, <coughs> public that goes to any of those water meetings. You know, it's very few. And it's the same handful of people. So, you know, no one's there to watch them as much as they watch the town. Well, if you look the at district, at least the audience, uh, I don't go to the way one. On social media, Facebook and the like, I know uh, sometimes uh, Peter gets in there with responses because people are even, uh, Patrick, right, they're questioning about the fire and the water and all and <laughs> trying to tell them Go we the don't meetings. have anything to do with that Go to the meetings yeah it's, yeah. it's in that we get i get some of the complaints the recent um non-disclosure of a hit when i received the letter some <coughs> some emails really going at the, how could i allow it to happen and things like that myself and the board of selectmen and but you can't get nothing to do with it but it's tough the answer tough hey not our problem you know not our government so you can't really say that I mean, the aunts has got like a big, a big problem. Now they're all worried about where they're building the new fire station. Is on one of the wellheads, you know, over there. And that's, I mean, there was a few people that came extra for that meeting, and really laid into them for that. And but there's, there's an opportunity to combine services. There is not with the town. 
you cannot bring that fire, those two fire districts, under the town umbrella. No. If you do, you will sink us in a few years. They were outside of Proposition 2.5, yeah. so they're able to operate. If you bring that under us with no, without planning a couple overrides, you know, every every six mm -hmm. years or so, we're, we're, <coughs> we're in big trouble. But there is an opportunity to combine those services. There is... You know, you can do um, a couple stations, and we can't vote that in. We, 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 the town. I, there's nothing no. we can do. I mean, maybe the town could do a, a non-binding ballot question and say, hey, would the residents like to do this or something? Have you ever but read the law? Have you ever, have you ever read the paperwork on the districts? Yeah. But Those guys were smart. They got that yeah. shit locked down to where it'll never change. I'm telling you right, right. now, it'll never change. And, and uh, even if the town voted, it doesn't matter. They have to vote themselves out of the So You have opinions all you, all you want. If they don't want to do it, the two credential committees have to agree to it yeah. and go to their own voters and have it successfully. Yeah. And it could save some uh, significant money. It wouldn't help us at all, but because it's there's so much duplication over their personnel, it could save some money for them, for the ratepayers. You know how many people were there to vote the new Orchard Fire Station? Well, you, An eleven you, million dollar building. You know how many people voted on it that night? Uh, it doesn't. Uh, Dominic, Not you've even. Got, you've got ten to, people. You've got to show him. An eleven vote. million dollar p building. Ten people voted. Yeah. Sad. But it, we're we're digressing here. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I just want to break it up. <laughs> That's. It's frustrating. I understand, especially if you came from a community where everything is all one one umbrella. You had. The Derricks. The call, the complaint. But, but <laughs> my question is, even with the fees for the water and everything they got, and if you brought that into the town, you don't think the town could absorb them? I, it'll never happen. But I'm just no, I'm without, curious. Everyone that would that be an enterprise it. funds. The fees for the water just pay for the water services. So we couldn't, we couldn't really make. You couldn't make a profit off of that, and then have. But they, they're making a profit now. Yeah. Well, you're, you're an enterprise funds allowed to make a profit. We just couldn't make a profit and then use that for police. I guess technically you could have water police. Yeah, you gotta get permission from the state to tap into the reserve funds of an enterprise account. Yeah. Correct. And I can tell you, Stonehead one time with almost $3 million in the nurses' <coughs> enterprise account, and the te they tried to find a million ways to try to get their hands on that money. Right. This doesn't happen. But conversely, if the enterprise fund fails, the town is on the hook for it. <laughs> so. Is it a county device? Unfortunately, though, it does tie your hands. Yeah. But to, uh, as he was mentioning, the un unfortunate thing is the two and a halfs. Now you have to go out, you want a million and a half dollars for your fire engine. Um, you have to do it with borrowing, or if you needed the fire station, you have to two and a half. And now, in our case, like they're building a fire station, we're all building a new school. Now we have to go out for a third for a new police station. If you wanted anything else with a large, you'd have to do. It's a lot of overrides you would have to do this way. They can do it all by themselves, and we just are, we're isolated from it. Then people can show up and raise the rates sufficiently to build a new fire station. <laughs> but anyway, uh, back to if anyone wants anything additionally that they found out that's a good chart, please let us know. I, I have a request. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> that's why I said to you before the meeting. I had, I had mentioned this to the town administrator way back in the fall. Coming from where I did, I really got spoiled with the budget that we received. And since I've been down here, I've been trying to figure out how the town functions, how many people are in different departments, how many people are here and there and what they make for money. And I hate to pick on the town administrator, but he's sitting here. But people look at wages, $240,000. They think <coughs> that's what he's making. Well, he's not. But, uh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't so, mean I haven't tried. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you looking to get that broken down? I'm trying to look to get and, and I, tell you, I brought I brought a budget. I did I did bring my budget that I used to work off, but I can tell you right now, this is who is this? Treasure collector. That you put the department head salary down. You put the assistants down because they're kind of separate. And they have two clerks. Uh, they gotta give different collector this or collector that. And merge them together. I'd like to see how many full-time employees in the department, and the town department head would be one. Right. You do get that at the finance committee hearing from the departments. Yeah. 
Yeah. Next week. Yeah. Am I going to get all that? Yeah. Here, going going back more than, do you get any history? Do you get go back a couple of years? Or uh, how many FTEs and stuff? Or? Yeah. No. We <laughs> well, <laughs> up today. Okay. Yeah. 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 last year so you can agree and then you yeah. can compare you know, it. Try, you know, and I like the idea of looking at that because it's an easy thing to look at. Okay, FTEs, and, and I'm not going to, I'm not looking yeah. to create a real issue here. But going forward, if I get this year that there were three FTEs in the accounting department, yeah. then I look at next year, all of a sudden there's three and a half. Yeah. You know, they had a part time or whatever, four. Well, they hired an employee because you don't always get that out front from all people. Uh, but it's just different things. And, and I actually, in my, my spare time, I put some, I've been sitting here working on this, and I'm going on the town's website because I actually asked somebody today. Talking about the police department, we have a chief, obviously. Yeah. Do we have a deputy chief? You do not. Do not. Do we have captains? Do we have lieutenants? How many? Yeah. How many sergeants? Mm -hmm. How, yeah. how many lieutenants? Eight sergeants. Well, I don't know any of that stuff. Okay. You, you, you get, get that first. We went with the tour. Yeah. Yeah. If I if I may interrupt. You get that. Uh, next week, when third, it's going to be Thursday now. I'll make sure everybody remembers that because we're unable to do it on Wednesday. Same time, <clears> same place. Same yes. Time. Yes. But uh, next Thursday, brother? we're doing it. You're making a very good point. But next week, <laughs> of all the material that they they present us, okay. whatever is lacking, you just identify it and we'll get it for you. Okay. Just because, as Derek said, most of them uh, do break it down. The only one who's always different is the dirt library. It's a different. It's a yeah. different version of things. <laughs> See, now I went on the library site trying to figure out. Who works there? I couldn't tell you how many people they have <coughs> working there. There could be 20 or there could be two. I have not a clue. And that's just... volunteers. Yeah. <coughs> it could be volunteers. A lot I, of them are, yeah. You know, yeah. And that, that's a good thing. You know, we the, uh, yeah, we've got the director, three librarians, and then I believe we budget for four uh, assistants that are part-time with uh, unbenefited positions. I mean, I don't... You know, and I, this is why I can't remember my children's names. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the expense part's fine, you know, I mean, but looking at this budget, this is all the expenses, telephone, this, this, that. I, I don't want to know all that. I don't need to know all that. They, they, most of them are fixed yeah. costs anyways. But, uh, you know, I think people, I know me personally, I would like to know the basic setup in the town accountant's office, how many people work in the town, the, the department head, does he have an assistant, is there clerks in there? I have no, she, she excuse me, I'm, I stand corrected. You can use they. <laughs> Did you go to the budget meeting last year, the town budgets last year? No, no, Jody wasn't. I wasn't you'll enjoy that because that's got all that information you want. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 and anything lacking, as I said, we'll make sure we get it for you. Yeah, we might. You know? <laughs> but I think, I think as, as a taxpayer, I think people like to see that. Like I said, I always say there's so much misinformation out there that, you know, I know the, the past town I was in, they put like what you do, wages, this, but they put the breakdown in the back as an appendix. So if you want to go in and look to see, break down every, what everybody's making and what the expenses are, you have that option. It's just, you know. No, all I can think of is that guy that stood up in town meeting, was it last year? And he said how great our book was, but he's gonna go home and throw it away. All that information. <laughs> you know, I mean, Mr. Haney. <laughs> And some people, you know, so you get the stuff out to well, them, they don't look at it, they come to town meeting and ask the questions. Yeah, but he he needs it to manage the, the whole group. He's got to yeah. be seeing that as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see um, it is broken down with the, um, the different expense categories. They have the, you usually see the wages, the OT and stuff. Not broken down per person, but you do get a uh, org chart which shows the employees, whether they're, they're FTE, um, I've asked for them to list if there's, uh, if they're paid from different funding sources, for example, uh, Board of Health, the, uh, the admin, it, people should know that person's funded from the, um, from the rental inspection program, things like that. Yeah, uh, you know, looking at the inspectional services, you know, there's a department head, then there's a building inspector, then you have electrical and plumbing. I'm assuming they're not full time. No. You know, are they half time? Based on 35 hours a week is kind of the number I've heard. You know, I just think I'd like to see and know that's all. Well, how much are they making? Yeah, I think you get a lot of that. It may not okay. fully satisfy you, but you know, that's that why we <laughs> helped, 
helps you ask for something in the I'll future. I'll take your budget and rip it up. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That was beautiful. I love it. <laughs> okay, that'd be all. We'll move on. Thank you very much, Eric. All right, thank you. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda was the discussion with the Degas Elementary. We've had some um, situations going back and forth with them, and uh, I've been in communications with the chairman, invited him, and last week said he was ill, and I re-invited him to come in for this evening's uh, meeting, and back and forth, the one I received from him yesterday or day before, the third, so it would be uh, the day before. So I'm sorry, Bernie, I won't be coming to your FinCom meeting this week to discuss your concerns. We will, however, have a meeting on March 2nd, which has been canceled, of the SBC, and I would be happy to have you address any of these concerns with the full committee. It's important to me that you feel totally aware of all SBC actions and activities so that you will feel comfortable acting as at least an unofficial liaison between the SBC and the FinCom. Hmm. Um, I've been in discussions. It, obviously, he's refused to come. And he's a chairman, and he chose uh, not to have a vice chair or a clerk, so no one else can speak for the committee. Because last time, the superintendent and a member of the school committee were here, but they had no standings there. They were just members of the committee. And that was unfortunate. I don't think they realized that. <coughs> um, I've talked to the chairman of the select board of selectmen, as well as our attorney, and it has been uh, suggested that the attorney, uh, Rich Bowen, advise the chairman that when the finance committee summons you, you appear. And that's a requirement. Um, I have not done anything like that, a phraseology or whatever. I was, we do all our business through respect and cooperation with each other, and we've been very successful. So what is happening now is the, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Bowen to uh, write pen a letter and advise the chairman that he is to appear before the Finance Committee. Good for you. Also, um, in the, uh, the Code of Mass um, regu Regulations, which um, is part of the enabling legislation for the MSBA, it designates the Chief Executive Officer as the head of the committee, and that the committee is an advisory committee to him. And <clears throat> there's been discussion we can do anything as far as the, the finance committee, considering uh, our charge responsibilities, we look into anything and everything. And I have concerns as we I've related to you and as David also, that we have concerns the way that the committee is being organized, not the way it's spending money per se. It's going along reasonably well. However, um, I've been in touch with other committees. One in particular is up at Stoughton that Jody and I are familiar with. And it has been designated as a model committee. And the uh, chairman, uh, attorney uh, Tom Recupero, is the chairman up there. And I've uh, been in touch with him. And he's been advising how he ran his committee and various things. And so our concern really, uh, from my point of view, is that the committee itself is not running it, and that there are very issues in the interrelationship between uh, the uh, OPM and our architect with the community itself. One in particular is we have concerns about the uh, invoices and how they are handled. Right now there is a committee of three made up of Dave Bernard, our director of municipal maintenance, the superintendent of the schools, and the chairman. And they've submitted some invoices, and I've been copied on them. And the OPM submits it, and less than 15 minutes later, the chairman approves the payment of the uh, invoice. Now, he is not does not have any construction background at all, and neither does the superintendent, with all due respect. And I'm certain, with all due respect, that Jeff is trying to do the best job he can from under the circumstances. However. Uh, I've also talked to our accountant, and she's uncomfortable because the minimum amount of expertise that reviews the invoice. So one of the issues we were going to bring up that the uh, committee be reformed so that there's at least uh, three, if not four people, and they are all construction background for reviewing the invoices. I, I, I think you are trying to <laughs> throw stones um, 
under the bus because you're paying PMA, 5% or whatever it is, and if you look at their background and what they do and their capabilities, no invoice is going to get through those guys that is not appropriate. Am, oh, please don't. You're, I and think doesn't you're relate to what the... I am not complaining about PMA. Yeah, but PMA is, is the... If PMA doesn't get... If it isn't right, PMA isn't going to send it on to us. They, they, I agree with you. They're the Tom. experts, indeed, and we're paying them a lot of money, and they do it for they're doing it for two hundred and forty schools or something like that. They've done it for indeed. So they However, do know it, they're, what they're doing. I, I haven't questioned them. I'm questioning the fact that the committee itself does not have any responsibility with reviewing, pro properly reviewing the invoices. They are have, they you, have been you, charged. In, the, in saying that, you're saying that PMA is not capable of of saying whether the invoice is appropriate or not. They are our representative. No, I'm sorry. I think you're misunder misunderstanding my remarks. I think the committee has a responsibility. They have been charged so by town meeting. And they have a They are required to approve it. In the, in the uh, regs, the committee is required to do the approval of it. Now, I would hope that whoever on the committee is approving it knows something about it also. They have a second look at it. <clears throat> Excuse me. If that be the case, then the committee, what you're suggesting, the committee is then an inconvenience to PMA in constructing the building. Who has the final say? The committee. So even if PMI, if they agree on it, the committee can shoot it down? Yes. That doesn't, that doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense. No, it doesn't town, make town it. meeting has given the money exclusively to the committee. It can only be spent by the committee. Well, I... I mean, I, I'm not finding fault with PMA's work but, at all. But I can see what Tom is saying. I mean, the state is looking at this. The, but I can see what Tom says. If, 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 they're, if we're paying them and they do a good job and they're obviously going to do a job, nothing's going to get by them, what is the committee for then? What, I mean, you're like putting two check marks where only one is needed. Right. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, That's kind of what I guess. I am at a loss to, to explain to you. I'm at a loss. To, all right. To I'm, just, just, I'm just <clears> trying to think of both sides. That's all. all right. I've been involved with the committees before, and committees have a responsibility. They are charged so by town meeting with what they're, and they have responsibilities that are clearly um, written out either in our bylaws, our charter, or mass general laws. Okay, I agree with and that. To, and they have to discharge those responsibilities by evaluating those invoices, irrespective of what PMA is So done. what you're saying is the committee doesn't have enough knowledge to even check PMA. Out of 22 members, there are only four who have construction experience. Yeah, but your, the, your construction experience versus what PMA has PMA, is... Not PMA. <laughs> Whatever. All, we're, it's all, pretty I, thin all I'm suggesting here and you're, is... You hired, we hired PMA. Yes, we did. Okay, so that's there. We're hiring them to be to represent to be our responsibility to cover our fannies on the the bills that come through. I mean, that's what you hired them for. Yes, because you don't know, and they're knee deep in this every day. Do you they're think not building the school? The committee's building the school. It's excuse me. The the school the committee is putting up a building. The fact that it's a school is not totally important. It is a, a, a piece of it. But it's constructing brick and mortar. And they're charged with the, the committee's charge of the responsibility of doing so. Do you believe PMA needs a check to be checked on? PMA is required to have a check on by the committee. I, I think that answers it right there. They're required, they're required. If it's yeah. a requirement, it's a requirement. Right. But I can see where Tom's coming from. Town meeting was specifically charged the committee with $90.4 million. May I, may I ask, oh, any opinion on that, Alan? Through you, Bernie. Yes, no. No, it, it's, uh, it's our responsibility. It's, uh, we're making the decision as to what we need to do. Our responsibility is monitoring the money to see that it's discharged appropriately. The committee itself is responsible for doing so, and we oversee that because it's a tax dollar. That's our res charge responsibility. Now, if they have people who are not experienced or not knowledgeable that are approving an invoice, 
then I think that's irresponsible of the, of the committee. But, but uh, on the flip side of that coin, they're approving something that's been approved by a professional. They're charged to do so. They're hired to do that. They're hired to, to uh, create, not necessarily create, but uh, handle the RFP process. The committee is charged with uh, reviewing the uh, submissions. But the PMA is going to be giving their opinion, of course, and we're hired them to do so. All right, now let, me, let me put it a different way. Shit, it's the fan. Who's going to be responsible? PMA or are you guys? Committee. Okay. That's and we're just going to... You don't think so? Bottom line is the committee is responsible. No. Then you're going to sue PMA. No. If it's screwed up. <laughs> there it is. No. At the end of the day, just to understand, the warrant comes to the selectmen. We have to sign it. The town accountant certifies that it's okay, and then we have to sign it. So when this was going on originally, uh, I was chair, and I insisted that someone qualified sign off. Because originally the stuff was coming to us with no paperwork or anything else. So Dave and I got on it. I thought he was put on there. We, we have prior history with CDM where we hired to do road work, and there was a lot of problems. The bills would come through, and you know nobody really knew what it was. And you know the selectmen at the end of the day are responsible. So Bernie's yeah. barking up the right tree then. Well, I mean, I can tell you right now, and Jim is here, and we go through the bills before we sign the warrant articles, and I have a tendency not to sign because I don't see proper paperwork. I'm not putting my name on something yeah. that I'm not as completely secure about. All right. And that's in, all right, well, and already uh, invoices have been held up because they haven't been probably proper paper. Excuse me, paperwork has not been provided by PMA. Seems like you guys got well, to it. It goes through three. No, it sounds, sounds sounds right now to me. You're, whatever. I just want yeah, okay. to check what Tommy said. I mean, I we understand where Tom's coming yeah. from, but if it's a requirement and everyone feels comfortable that it has to be done, then what are you going to say? I, I, I would have to have an account. You know, earlier I had forgotten all about it. Tom, I, my apologies. Even though, uh, as you point out, PMA is a professional organization, they should be doing it right. There have been instances where there is, they have not supplied the appropriate paperwork to accompany the invoice for approval by the committee. And the only one who caught it was Dave. And it, at the, that point in time, Dave was the only one qualified to sign off on the invoices. And he was actually signing off on them before they went to Either, either in fact, at that time, they had to go through the, so the uh, school committee and the selectmen, selectmen being the final one. But uh, the committee finally wised up to it, and we went in, and I changed it on my own <coughs> initiative, and it was approved then by the committee itself versus David having the whole ball of wax on him. But it was still didn't have sufficient qualified personnel. He needed the assistance. He still does because the other people do not. And as I said, there were some invoices that didn't have adequate um, documentation, and David was the one that caught it. Okay. Good for David. Yes, and very good. Okay. But I would hope you'd have to be nose to nose with PMA to make sure that they understood that they dropped the ball. Indeed, and there's been some other issues with PMA in terms of a really interrelationship that uh, we've had difficulties with, and we're trying to solve all those issues now before we get into the serious construction season. you Melbourne. Okay. Would you like also to, uh, one of the issues we were gonna bring up on the list of them, and I've copied you on everything that I've been communicating with them and copies that I've received, but um, I'm trying to get them now to have a, a site visit. Would you like to accompany us? No, I don't, I don't want to go. <laughs> I, what I want to do is get this building built on time in within the budget. That's what Indeed. I want to do. And uh, so far, more, so far we uh, haven't incurred any excessive costs that would uh, encroach on the uh, cushion that we have. I, I would be go after PMA as to that site is sitting idle and it's been sitting idle for eight weeks, and it's going to sit idle for probably another six weeks before any of the construction starts. You know, the currently well, is. Everything has to be done on a, on a particular schedule. MSPA requires a step-by-step -step process. You have to finish one. We've just done 100% uh, completion in the, the uh, drawings and the like. So now we go out, uh, they're creating the RFP, 
and they're developing a list of interested uh, vendors or contractors. We have some 85. I, mean, I mean, understand that. We heard that but, last week. Yeah, and then, so we go out step by step, <coughs> and now they're... Um, but the, There's a group I'm of three, I believe, three or four of the committee members are all uh, construction experienced people who are uh, in the process of creating and, and issuing the RFP for the con construction. And don't and give us the time limits on those. Yeah. But we're wasting time while, it, while, uh, while the paper's well, moving around. It's not wasting time. We're adhering to the schedule they're required to follow by MSPA. You have to go through. Oh, we're behind schedule, so no, huh? no, we're, we're not schedule. behind schedule. No, we're no, I, I understand that, okay. but but you, you can't want to see you move forward quickly. I want to. I, 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 I don't like to see lulls. But we had to wait. Um, as I said, MSBA has a very strict schedule. You have to follow. You have to follow their schedule. We accepted their conditions, so we have to follow their schedule. Oh, and we are the on the schedule that the they have set out for us. And uh, PMA has to turn in a certain uh, documentation to uh, account for the schedule that we're maintaining it, and they have to, they accept it within 15 days. MSB is very good about that schedule. Okay. So it may appear that there's nothing uh, going on on the work site, but there is an awful lot going on in the background. We're not building a goddamn building. That's what's not happening. Well, we're, we're building it on paper. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, moving on. Ouch. The uh, articles we've had. The warrant has not yet closed. We've, uh, some of the articles, I believe you've been copied on them. Any questions yet? I'll be, begin scheduling. Um, I'm not sure. Um, initially, uh, Sandy Slavin, um, you're familiar with her, I believe. She had a conflict of a meeting because they also, the CBC meets on, meets on a Wednesday night. Last week, uh, next week, we were going to do the um, department review on Wednesday afternoon. And so I invited her to come in on Wednesday at about 1.30. And that was be convenient for her. But now we're going to do it on Thursday. I will contact her. Perhaps she'd like to come in an afternoon as a convenience if she could be home with her husband having dinner or something like that. Oh, good, because I'm going to be capital. I want her to be capital planning. We'll rush the department, sir. We won't have any problem with that. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. I didn't check my calendar before I came in. We have, uh, with a new schedule, we have sufficient time to go through all the uh, articles and the special town meeting, which hasn't uh, been submitted as yet but we're gonna have a special, of course. And so we have sufficient time to review all the articles and put the warrant together and the like. So it shouldn't be a problem. So our next meeting will be on, let's see. Oh, it's here on the page, Bernie, and you'll be on the right month. The 13th. So it's not going to be on a Wednesday, it's going to be on a Thursday. Correct. So Thursday the 13th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same time, same place. Yes. It'll probably start around either 8.30, 9 o'clock. We'll be in the Selectman's meeting room in the multi-service center. So there's no meeting Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Correct. Do we have a schedule of um, who's coming in at what time yet? Bernie? Eric will make that up. Eric will make that up. Excuse me, in cooperation with his uh, department heads. Kelly, when you get that, can I get it so I can see where the important ones are, honey? Yep. Thank you. As a courtesy to Dominic, Kelly, um, since he doesn't read his email. No, no, I know how to. He does now. I know how to. You know what I have to with Kelly? I don't know how to. I can read the email, but then when it's on another page, you know, what's that called? Um, Catchment? Yeah, no, I'm lost. I'm lost. I, mean, I, don't know how to do I haven't figured that out yet. I'm trying, Kelly. Oh, have they got your printer yet? No, I have a printer, oh, but yeah. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> Come on. 
no, I'm old school. No, he's telling I'm old school. He makes he makes I, got a, I got a flip phone, Baby and I don't have a charge card. If I can't pull out of my pocket cash, I don't buy it. Flip phone don't open attachments. No. <laughs> Do I have a computer at the store? Now again, uh, I will assign um, different articles, and what I'd like to try to do is um, assign the liaisons for certain departments also, so I'll try and keep the articles in with whomever would be the li liaison for that particular department. If you have something you're really interested in, Dominic, automatically you would go to the uh, upper tech, yeah. of course, because you're on the board over there. Remember, we don't have Ellis with us to write anything. Right. So we got to do it ourselves. Ellis was good. Well, sometimes he had help. No. I didn't say he didn't, Bernie. <laughs> but if you have a particular interest in a certain uh, department, please let me know, and I'll try to make sure if there is any conflict. We'll do that. And let's see. There's uh, the outstanding bonds. Uh, Derek referred to the bonds. And the like, we've had an op opportunity, and hopefully we can take advantage of it. Uh, the rates are very low, and we were trying to, last night we were talking, trying to speculate as how we could uh, borrow for anticipated projects, because the interest rate is extraordinarily low. But, no, nah, couldn't do that. Still got to pay for it. Yeah, we still got to wait until we qualify to do something or anything. Well, a big believer in borrowing. Yeah. Okay, and the... Uh, List of articles, the outstanding articles. <coughs> uh, I have a new list uh, from CPC. I believe I, I may have given it, uh, transmitted out to all of you. The uh, funds are re the funds that are reflected. The balances that, that are reflected on the uh, chart are the ones of the CPC. The totals on the one I got from the accountant may be behind and not quite accurate, they're reasonably accurate. If there's anything in particular, there was something, um, I think Jerry, you had, well, someone asked with respect to the dog park in terms of liability. <coughs> Excuse me, I looked up the old um, motions and some of the detailed work that had been handed out to me at the time that we picked up and there was no indication in the uh, printer material I had with respect to liability on the dog park. But they are an independent organization. That we wound it. Uh, we gave them twenty thousand. CPC did, and they projected their budget at a total of two hundred thousand. And they were getting most of it raising money, as well as a grant they got from uh, an organization that's on the Cape that does a lot of funding in the dog parks in various communities. You mean you want you yes. trying to find out what the, if, how much liability the town has? If well, that, if there was any town liability. <coughs> oh, that's okay. That was the real question. That's why I looked at the paperwork. I hadn't asked uh, Derek or anybody But else. they are carrying a policy. They, yeah. they do, yeah. Yeah, that would be. It was yeah. last week, yeah. It would be an MOU. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do all these name changes on the school. They'll just say no. <laughs> no. Uh, I suspect no. they are uh, submitting a uh, petition. Well, there's one here already. One here. One here. I suppose I there's going to be a that. couple. Oh, it may be in the book. I haven't looked through it. Uh, Yesterday. It is uh, yesterday? Came it in is yesterday? Folder. Well, sometimes I don't look at my folder because I have all my paperwork uh, here. So he's calling you out for not reading your emails, but he's not looking at his folder. <laughs> 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 Listen, I'm on top of my game, pal. <laughs> <laughs> there may be uh, there's some current concerns about it. I'm sure those, the powers that be, will review it and. Uh, Make their determination. If it's a legitimate petition, it's obviously automatically on the warrant. Oh, I know that. Yeah. Even if it's not, it's automatically on the warrant. Second, we're going to vote it in, right? No. 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 Nope. Automatic. My on. charter. All uh, petitions petition are automatically on the warrant. Okay. Yeah. When it gets to the floor, it's whether the, the moderator and uh, the town council uh, feel it's legitimate. In some way. Ochi dochi. That's the only time to question. I think that's the only time it can be questioned. You can question it beforehand, but it's still on a warrant, correct? 
goes up, a petition article by law goes on the warrant as long as it has the required okay. number of signatures. Whether it's legal, illegal, written correctly, written incorrectly, it goes on the warrant as is submitted. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Very good. I have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Unanimous. <laughs> Even if I don't read my emails, I have a nice record for without a girl Kelly. She's the best. <laughs>